Crisis Ability, Episode 1. As a society, we've hit a major roadblock. The question is, how are we going to navigate to overcome the crises that stand before us? Four of us have come together to explore this. This includes myself, Alan Fine, founder and CEO of LUAT GBC, Devry Bufner Vorwerk, founder and CEO of Devry BV Sustainable Strategies, Steve Young, Global Executive Director of the Cow Round Table for Moral Capitalism, and Michael Wright, founder and CEO of Intercepting Horizons. Welcome to Crisis Ability, where we seek conversations to transcend crises with possibilities. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, uh, so tell us about this crisis ability, Devry. What is this? Oh, you'd like me to start? I was going to shift it over to Mike. Um, okay. <laughs> so we gathered together in this moment, and we we you know what brings us together are um, our work around the co round table and moral capitalism. I think Steve will talk about that. But in that moment, we started to talk about perhaps a void in the messaging. While we're all as a society getting tactical messages on how to um, social distance ourselves, what we need to do in terms of preparing our children for at-home education. Um, the messages we're not getting are some of the, the higher order leadership messages um, that appeal to you know, the real human side of us, the fear that we have um, within us right now. And so we came up with this concept of crisis ability, I-B-I-L-I-T-Y, not ability. And it's where crisis and possibility merge. And why possibility? Because in every good crisis, we know that uh, good innovations in processes, in products, in um, the way we go about uh, living our lives, innovations can emerge. And the way I think about it is what's happening with this pandemic is we're seeing that there's a collective crisis of of all of our systems, the healthcare system, the education system, the economic system. And you know, prior to uh, the pandemic hitting, we were also um, coming to the grand conclusion as a, as a global society that, that we have a, a crisis of the, you know, climate, our climate system, our you know, environmental and ecosystem. And so um, where I would like us to play on this Crisis Ability podcast is to come in every morning with the notion that um, as we all begin to see the challenges um, you know, that we're gonna face on a daily basis, that we not forget to be thinking about um, something greater than ourselves and the ability, the, the ability, the possibilities that can come as a result. I, I wanted to interject something in that too, and that is about uh, when you mentioned about environmental issues that we've come to the realization yeah. of, I think there's also mental health and public health issues as well. Exactly. In the context I, of yeah, that. Exactly. Mike, maybe you can talk to us more about this whole, your, your perspective with regard to crisis ability. Well, I think we uh, take a look at a couple of uh, interesting constructs and uh, no pun intended to the constructal law of physics from Dr. Bajan. But what's flowing and how it flows is based on trust. And right now, the real challenge is when you are looking at crisis ability is how do we <clears throat> implement a sort of a moral uh, code, if you will, that allows us to improve the trust while we innovate and create more possibilities so that we keep the flow of capital in this case across the economy. We come up with new ways of uh, changing the direction of how we might interact and do things uh, to increase, you know, whether or not the piano teacher gets paid through a virtual uh, avenue instead of a physical one. Yeah, yeah I love this idea that uh, Bijan talks about in his book, Freedom and Evolution, about uh, chaos, un chaos understood or how to navigate it becomes architecture. Uh, yes. It's very interesting. Um, Steve, in, in the context of this also, maybe you could comment in association with crisis, abil crisis ability. Well, the, the, you know, each of us um, as a person, um, we're very creative, basically. 
sometimes we, we limit our creativity. We get narrow, sometimes out of fear, sometimes because we're not given options by life. But our creativity goes in several ways, right? One is, is we, we can make things. We can use our hands. We, we can create in this physical material world. On the other side, we can create with our minds. As, as, as Michael was talking about trust. Trust is something that, human, that we as people, humans, mothers and dads with kids, friends, neighbors, co-workers, we can create more trust or we can undermine trust. So the, the, the notion that, that, that we can create both in the material world, getting the piano teacher paid, mm-hmm. uh, and in the, in the, if you will, in the mental emotional world, um, how are parents you know, who are now at home with their kids, this is a totally new experience, Kids could be five years old. They could be 14 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they could be little kids who don't really understand this new dynamic of mommy and dad are both at home at the same time. If the 15-year-old wants to spend more hours on, on video games. Um, and a lot of this, this unexpectedness, I think, created by the need to stop the flow of the virus uh, is, is adding stresses and strains, creates insecurity. Insecurity creates fear. Fear that undermines trust. Trust undermines the flow. So how can we be creative to to run it backwards, right? We keep the flow of of, of being good people going. We deal with our insecurities. We deal with our fear because we're creative. We create positive ways of moving forward. You know, and when you say that, one of the things that I think about is I think about this whole idea that civilization is held together um, by individuals who are trying to improve the quality of each other's lives. That each of our jobs, I think a lot of us lose track of this whole idea that our job's purpose is to add value to others. And uh, in the context of that, you know, here's the car round table for moral capitalism. Um, what is moral capitalism? Why, why do we need to emphasize this, especially at this point in time? Well, I, I think that we can talk about that by sort of flowing from what I was just talking about, which is that we, we live, let's just say we live in two worlds. And I think most of the, the ancient religions, all religions go there. We live in a kind of material world between, between birth and death. We also live in some kind of mental, spiritual, emotional, thoughtful world. And moral capitalism tries to look at, at the economics of our lives. How do we get what we need? Our, our food, our clothes, our entertainment, um, the books we might want to read, the, the presents. I mean, if it's a wedding anniversary, I think Debris, your wedding anniversary, buying okay. a present for somebody, all these material things add to the quality of our lives. But at the same time, their relationships, their moral factors, there's respect, there's compassion, there's, there's creating space for people for helping them out. The two need to be brought together, I think, if, if, if we as people are going to, to optimize the kind of life we have, the quality of our life. Quality, is, it's like the word value, Alan, you were just saying. What is value? Is value gold coins? Is that the only thing in life? Ebenezer Scrooge had his box of gold coins, and he was told by his girlfriend that he had to choose either her or the coins, and he took the coins, and he gave up the value of love with another human person, and he ended up a kind of really miserable guy, right? Uh, there are all these other kinds of values, the, the value of listening to, to, to Mozart, the value of hip hop, uh, the, the value associated with having a friend. Um, all of these things are material and non-material are values. And we need a system which allows us to maximize all these values. Can I, can I interject for a yes, minute? Of course. Because I love where you're going, Steve. And I feel that that really encapsulates this notion of crisis ability, the possibility, because the values you're talking about are um, the values that I'm seeing emerge across social media, the things that really matter to people in society right now, Um, whether there's a, a global effort to share music that will help people as they're feeling in fear or in crisis um, at the moment and they're feeling their home and they're feeling like they can't get out or, um, you know, the, the values of sharing, you know, directly with your neighbor. Um, sometimes we're just so busy in this other system of, of making money that those other values, while they may exist, we're not placing enough effort in them. And, and you all have talked about my, the, the piano teacher example for our guests 
where that really came from was um, yesterday as we were finishing our final uh, piano face-to-face -face piano lesson for my seven-year-old son here uh, with his piano teacher here in my neighborhood she she looked at me and she said I can't I don't know what to do because my my business is dependent on the students coming to my home so I can teach them piano and in that very moment I looked at her and said well we'll just come up with a different way for you to do it there's no reason your revenue raising model should should be in you know contradiction to um, you know to our what we value which is the ability of my son to to learn piano so let's let's figure out how to do it virtually and by the way I think you could actually see more business in this moment in time because we're home as parents trying to put constructive lessons together for all day long while we're also trying to do business online. What if you switched your schedule a bit? And we talked about you doing it through, you know, different times in the day. So there we're exhibiting the, the value that we place on the human being to make sure that she's still, you know, able to succeed during this crisis, the value of music, and then the ability, the ability, the possibility of doing things differently. You know, something I want to interject, and that is just that what I've heard, a common word that has come through these conversations is the word share. And, uh, and this whole idea of that, that, in essence, to be happy, we need to be with each other. And that all of these things that we develop and do and so on and so forth, our ability to be able to share them with each other, to add value to each other, is what brings us happiness. In the context of that, Mike, Adrian Bijan wrote this book, Freedom and Evolution, and he talks about this concept of flow. Um, and that in essence, our society isn't just individuals, but something about the nature of collectively, we're, we're a coordinated dynamic. Uh, maybe you could speak more towards this philosophy in, in, in conjunction with moral capitalism. Well, I think you look, have to look at things that enable flow and that uh, sort of restrict flow. <clears throat> so each of us, if you want to look at it that way, each of us is a valve, right? We have things that we either put into the system or take from the system that either increase the flow through the system or restrict it. Um, the more that we can free it up or when we run into a crisis like this, basically something that's stopping flow, right? I mean, we're intentionally stopping the flow of, of people and interactions, um, hopefully not goods and services yet but uh, some services like the piano teacher are gonna be at risk. The question is how do we work around those or you know, open up new valves or new patterns or new ways of keeping the flow going? Mm -hmm. Because if we don't, that's where you, you know, things stop. Uh, once they stop, of course they die. So now, the this brings up an interesting question. How do we innovate yeah. going forward and create uh, new channels or new ways for flow to occur? The people I'm more concerned about are not so much people uh, like us uh, who have a certain amount of means or capability to earn a living or keep things going or the profile of how we uh, get our compensation for the things we do. It's going to be the people that, you know, are being put out in mass numbers, the restaurant workers, yeah. the uh, people that work in uh, different, different professions or different um, activities where they have no alternative, there are no options. They were dependent on whatever um, system or organization uh, for their livelihoods. Yes, we'll be able to uh, perhaps bridge that for a while, but it depends on how long this thing goes on as to how much, I wouldn't say how much, how fast we need to innovate. And, and when I we think see cities that will be as we go and I think something like crisis ability it's just hey we're just one more spark but who knows where those sparks go and when we see cities on lockdown for example and we say gosh how long is that going to occur yes there's innovation that needs to occur during this time but we also need to be thinking about uh, the fact that we're interrupting the flow of society mm -hmm. okay. One thing I, that's on my mind about this crisis ability and our morning meeting or our morning podcast is I think about here in the state of Minnesota, Governor Wall's um, initial comment on Sunday when he stepped up and talked about the schools closing. 
he showed remarkable leadership also in that moment by saying, you know, we as Minnesotans, we will have opportunities. We're going to need volunteers. We're going to need you to be thinking about um, how you can contribute to um, the issues. And um, that's where I think it's going to be important and where maybe this crisis ability can, can you know, foster the, the connectivity and the needed information that needs to flow. Um, I think people are thinking, gee, right now the government is making all of these decisions and it's, and, and yes, while they're engaging community at the same time, some people can feel disconnected from that. And where I feel crisis ability can, can help bridge the divide is to try to take some of that information and some of the actions that we're being asked to take and then have very real conversations to, to Mike's point. What are those things we need to be, you know, doing the ability on, the possibilities on now? Because um, there are people that are going to be suffering in significant ways in our community. And we should be talking about how we come up with new ways of, of addressing those in this moment. Steve, any, any thoughts, closing thoughts in association with what uh, Devery just said? On a closing closing thought, um, I would come back to the the importance of this this non material side, the, the the sort of the moral side of who we are, and and the moral side of our systems, mm -hmm. because both capitalism has a moral side and politics has a moral side. And here in Minnesota, I thought Governor Waltz, both on Sunday and then yesterday, when when he announced the closing of restaurants. Which, which to go to Michael's point is going to put a, out of of out of employment lots and lots of people who are basically our employees. They're paid by the hour, and if and if all the restaurants are closed, where are they going to go? He invited in a local chef and and a, a, a Andrew Zimmern who has a TV show and public to talk about in a very emotional way with some other chefs what it means to be a chef, what it means to run a restaurant, and how this is. This is really moving, and I thought for the governor, a politician, to have the sense to bring in somebody who is emotionally involved yeah. in in the in the restaurant, in the customers, in the workers, in the preparation of the food, so that it it, it you know comes alive in your mouth. Um, that was an example of being a very a really working, having the moral sense, and and being alive and present to other people in this crisis. Mike, yeah, last add word. To that one other thing, which is, yeah, we talked about the flow of capital. There's also the flow of trust, and there's no better way to build trust than do something innovative for somebody else. That was rich. Would you say, Mike and Steve and Alan, that crisis ability is about facilitating the flow of trust, and, um, you know bringing bringing forth the possibilities that could exist if we would all um think think more um thoughtfully about our capitalist system and it, it being based on trust um i think to some extent but what comes to my mind are older sort of um stiff upper lip you know uh keep calm and carry on things one my dad and his in his prep school in the 1920s, picked up this older thing, never show the white feather. Crisis ability, I mean, you can always do something. Yes. You have ability. And then the second thing is, I can't remember the, the, the who wrote the poem, it's a, a you know, ancient classic, uh, probably from my grandparents' generation, but it's, you know, you can all, you, you are the master of your fate. You are the captain of your soul. Invictus. Um, and you can do things. From a true ethical, from a true from a true ethical standpoint, I would say that we need to recognize that character development is important, um, that people are not just means, but we're ends, until, you know, each of us is an end, um, that we need to also, though, think about outcomes um, that are going to serve the greater good for society. Um, you know, contextually also, we need to think about the web of relationships and how important maintaining the integrity of that web um, in society is to our continued healthy functioning. Mike, did you have something too that you'd like to add here? No, I'm good. I think okay. we got, yeah, again, it's, we got to come up with ways to innovate and uh, figure out how to keep the majority or as many people as we can connected and 
you know, trust and capital flowing simultaneously. Okay, Devery, why don't you just give us one closing thought? My closing thought is um, come back tomorrow. This is where we will um, talk about the importance of the intersection of crisis and possibility. And right. together we can, um, we can create possibilities that will um, expedite solutions to the many social and economic and even environmental issues that will surface as a result of this pandemic. Yeah. Fabulous.